Before I begin this review, I want to quickly announce the winner of the massive prize of the Digimon TCG that we did a video on a couple weeks ago. Firstly, I want to thank all of you that commented in that video. We really appreciate that you guys did that, but unfortunately, there is only one winner, and that winner is Rami Lee. Congratulations, mate. Please DM us on Twitter at Dimsy's Domain so then we can ship these cards off to you for you to enjoy yourself. And again, thank you to all of you that commented on that video. But now, let's get on with the review. As I suspected, Lopman did not have any memories but had them awakened with War Greyman being revealed in the last episode. His appearance triggered the memories as we are finally treated to some more information this episode as we see the flashback created by Lopman's memories. We saw all the Megas including Ofaniman and Seraphiman who looked like they sacrificed themselves in order to beat Millennial Man. But they didn't completely defeat him. It looked like fragments of him were still flying around. It seemed like they were all fighting in the Cloud Continent. But the fragments of Millennial Man fell into this continent that they are currently on. But as we know, when Digimon die, they do come back to life. So maybe both Seraphimon and Ofanimon sacrificed themselves but then came back to life. Lopman mentioned that he was leading his own army when fighting the Army of Darkness. And we saw Anjaman and Anjawuman teaming up with the partner Digimon. So does that mean that the other Holy Angel Digimon were leading their own armies as well? Millennial Man himself was said to be too strong for the Army of Darkness. So does that mean he was summoned by someone or even created, which in the lore he is created by the fusion of Chimeramon and Meshidromon. So does that mean that even Millennialmon has a boss? Even though that boss will not be anywhere close to Millennialmon's strength, is there a possibility that there is another Digimon masterminding everything? Metal Phantomon, who's in our top Metal Digimon video, please do go check that video out, it's quality, even if I say so myself. He appears in his full glory and of course, there's a fight scene. Never a break from the action, am I right guys? I've actually thought about this and I don't think we will ever have an episode where we don't have any action scenes. From now until the last episode, we will always have a fight scene or an action sequence. I'm not saying it's bad, I like action, but look at the beginning of the episode on how invested you were in terms of the lore and the world building and learning Millennium Man's history compared to the action in the second half of the episode. For me personally, I was way more interested in the first half over the second half of the episode. Not to say that the second half was bad, but in the first half we were learning some new exciting information. We need a few episodes just dedicated to the world building. Just a few. We learn only a bit about the monster Millennial Man. We need to have some episodes where we learn more about him and we feel the dread of the Digidestin as he is slowly making a return. That way, it's an effective build up to when he does eventually make his return. The problem with the action I have is that it's way too repetitive. A new Digimon will come out, Greymon will put up a decent fight, then the Digimon will digivolve into their ultimate form, Greymon will still put up a decent fight even after the Digimon that they were fighting digivolves and then Ty calls for Metal Greymon. But for some reason, Metal Greymon Greymon always struggles in a fight. He struggles in almost every fight. His debut was against Metal Tyrannomon. How is he struggling against Metal Phantomon? He one shotted Metal Tyrannomon. It's been a constant theme throughout the past 10 to 15 episodes. This formula of Greymon would do decent and looks like he will win against the Digimon enemy of the day until they digivolve into their ultimate and then Metal Greymon would struggle and slug it out. I'm not saying Metal Greymon always loses or anything but it's very repetitive and predictable. I think that's why I'm sick of the action and want some change whether it comes through flashback episodes, expanding the lore of the digital world or even some world building episodes. But that's just me. But now the Barkman that were in this episode are using the Dark Lightning to digivolve into Metal Phantomon as well as Metal Phantomon himself digivolving into Gokumon or, or Reapermon whichever name you prefer. Metal Greymon struggles but digivolves into War Greymon and decimates Gokumon. I need to say I love how War Greymon is massive in this series. I prefer it actually him being this colossal giant rather than the smaller version we saw back in the original. Guys comment down below do you guys like the new series of War Greymon or do you prefer the smaller version? Lopman confirms that it is Kari who is Anja Woman's partner but we all knew that but what does Skull Nightman and Millennial Man want with Kari? Maybe because last time Anja Woman had a pivotal role that's why they would rather have them both captive in order to make sure what happened in the previous war won't happen again. Kari is the Crest of Light. 
I would not be surprised if Millennial Man wants to turn that crest into the crest of darkness to be even more stronger. Because as strong as he was, he still lost last time. And as Lopman confirmed in this very episode, it's the power of the bond between the Digidestin and the partner Digimon that allows the miracle to digivolve further and become even more stronger. Maybe that's what Millennial Man wants. He wants his own partner to get even stronger. He more or less resembles the power of darkness. And what is the kryptonite of darkness? Light. Millennial Man wants Kari to be his partner in order for him to win the war this time. So imagine taking in your biggest weakness and corrupting it into darkness. That's what I believe is happening here with Millennial Man wanting Kari to be his partner in order for him to win the war this time round. That's my little theory on what's happening with Kari but let me know if you agree down in the comments or comment down below on your take on what they want with Kari. I look forward to reading them and just as always, care for nothing.